goes by Metro Cat on the interwebs, and she's been on several reefing adventures since 2011. Um, and she absolutely loves reefs. I've seen her around at FFN for several, several years. Um, she was she won first tank of a month in 2012, and then again in 2016. Was that for nano reefs, right? Um, she turned her passion for reef keeping into a career in 2016. She works full time in the hobby. She is an OG influencer and has been a speaker at Reef Book Plaza. That's a big status right there, folks. He's in now. And this is her second time speaking at FFM, which is a bigger status. It says second, but I know it's third because it, when was the first one? It was, uh, first. Yeah, so you've just been consecutively... I've been consecutive. This is my third year speaker at FFM. All right, so she loves to just keep it real, so let's keep it up. Let's give it up for MetroCat. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. So, as Anthony said, my name is Kat. I'm known as MetroCat everywhere. My hashtag is Reef Like Cat, which you see up here. I got stickers if anybody's collecting. Um, I'm just going to go right ahead and get started. This is a fun, very quick picture show, pretty much. It's about using everyday things that are in your home that you don't think you could repurpose for your reef and your hobby. Uh, or one example was uh, in the, uh, two bills previous to the one that I have going on now, I used a shoe uh, rack, a wall-mounted shoe rack from Ikea, and I repurposed that as an electrical app cabinet. So you pulled it down and the whole control panel came came out like I was, I'm not a DIY person, but when I did it, I was very proud of myself. So you just use everyday things to repurpose them because, you know, we can't just go out and buy one thing for one purpose. Um, so you'll be surprised what you could do with just everyday stuff that you have laying around. And with that, we're going to get started. So we're going to talk about the pantyhose. Um, one of the things that you do with uh, passive filtration, uh, using passive media and yourself, you just throw a bunch of carbon, GFO, um, you know, media material of ceramic, in, that's ceramic in nature, in a little media bag, throw it in the sump, that's called passive filtration. And uh, the, the bag that it's in is just a porous bag to let water flow through. So why go out and buy all these media bags when you could just use pantyhose. Uh, pantyhose also works great if you have a freshwater tank and you have shrimps or you have guppies. Those fry are really small and tiny. They get sucked up in the filtration. So if you use pantyhose to um, you know, cover the intake of your filtration, it works as a barrier so that the babies don't get sucked up. So pantyhose has a lot of uses in uh, definitely your sump. I personally used it for, I just want to use a little bit of a particular media, not too much because I have a nano tank or a Pico. This works great because those media bags that you get commercially can be really large and your media can escape. So this is a great um, way to use it. I also used it, believe it or not, to uh, imprison a mushroom. So I had like a little uh, PVC where I had a frag or some rubble, and I put my mushroom on and covered it with pantyhose so it wouldn't fly off, but it would still get a little bit of the light and definitely the flow. So just for a few days till it attached, and then I removed it. So that's one thing at, in the house that you could use. Here's another one, a mascara wand. That's actually my picture. I use a mascara wand to clean the vents on my ATI, my T5s. And I've actually got some samples here for you gentlemen that might be too shy to borrow from anywhere. But these are disposable that I get at the cosmetic counter. They're just free for anybody to take. And they also work pretty great to clean out airline tubing. Another great thing to use to clean out airline tubing is a bamboo skewer because it's really thin and it's also long. So while this will only get like a couple inches from the very tip of an airline tube, uh, a bamboo skewer can really push stuff out. So if you just let that pump run with, say, vinegar, or you use the bamboo skewer, you can really clean out an uh, airline tubing. Another thing along the same lines as the mascara wand, um, I don't know if you can see it, but you get these 
It looks like a bottle brush cleaner, but it's uh, stiff, so it doesn't wiggle. It, you can unwind uh, it to any size that you want, and it has a bottle brush cleaner at the end, so this also can get into nooks and crannies, skimmer parts, palm parts that might be like really tiny to put an actual brush in. And this one is very flexible, kind of like a snake, uh, very flexible metal on here. I wouldn't necessarily use this too often in a salt water because of the metal. I, you don't know what kind of metal they're using, if it's stainless, if it's not. But for just getting into a place that you can't with anything else and it needs a little bit of flexibility, this one works great. So moving on, compressed air duster. This you use um, to clean out your cameras, your keyboards. Uh, it's just a really sharp, very strong burst of air to take out all the crap you've got going on in a keyboard. So this also works great for my ATI cleaning up the vents. If I don't want to open it up and do a deep clean for my light, LEDs, absolutely anything, and I see you know, bits and pieces, lint, schmutz, whatever, I can just air compress, dust it, and the, it'll blow out all the crap. So this is a really uh, neat trick that I love to use on my lights. Magnetic tool holder. This particular one in the picture, you can probably get like four bucks, five bucks at Harbor Freight. But there's many different kinds. It's basically a me metallic uh, or magnetic strip that you screw onto your cabinet, um, inside, a, inside a closet, and you can put all your metal tools. We've got tongs, uh, bone cutters, uh, frag cutters, scissors, whatever you use, you can just magnetically attach so you don't have to, they're all different sizes. So this is just a neat way to get them out of sight, but still make it really handy. Uh, you get different kinds. This one is just from Harbor Freight with a single strip, but you also get like a, a broader one, so you could use it for things that are bigger than a tool. So there's many different kinds of magnetic tool holders. Command hooks. These are actually broom holders and they can hold a substantial amount of weight. Um, on the right side is actually a friend of mine, Jonathan, who uses it for like various tools inside his very tiny uh, stand under his tank. So uh, it's not just for brooms, these little teeth or the, uh, the front opens and then it closes around whatever object you have. So you could even hang siphon hoses, um, you know, other kinds of tubings if you have stuff like this. Whatever it is that you use, there's a use for command hooks or the, the broom hangers in your closet somewhere, for sure. Pipettes, turkey basters, those are some of the things that this can hold. Toothbrush holders, this particular one is made of silicone and it, uh, it, it attaches with an adhesive. And what I find really good about this is the silicone teeth, which is holding the toothbrush, can actually hold pipettes. It can hold uh, you know, pointy sticks, like all the coral vendors have the pointy sticks. It can hold absolutely anything without damaging it. Um, if it's too heavy, obviously I won't use it because this is not designed for anything other than a toothbrush. But it works great for small little objects that you need. Um, and it's hard to find or you might lose it. Um, and also the toothbrush. People use the toothbrush to uh, scrub frags when you get them. If you've got algae on frag plugs, on rocks, on anything in your tank, you can use a toothbrush to, to scrape it off and siphon it away. Um, it's just a nice small uh, tool to get into the nooks and crannies where a larger brush will not. So don't discount the good old toothbrush. A spatula. So now I have a question. What do you think this would be used for? Skimmer cup. Yes! Skimmer cup. So you get this in lots of sizes. This particular one is tiny. So it's very short. It's probably about like four or five inches, maybe six inches. So it's really tiny. It's very easy to get it into the head of a skimmer collection cup and take out all that gunk without having to take it all out, out of your sump, and go and clean it in the sink. Uh, today, a lot of the newer skimmers, the technology comes with an automatic 
skimmer cleaning head. Just getting the head itself is so expensive. You know, they, they make it uh, make a retrofit ones for certain brands also, but the newer ones come with it, like the Red Sea comes with it. Although it's a manual one, but this works the same way. It's a manual uh, spatula that you just use to skim out all the gunk, so you can go a lot longer in between a deep clean of your skimmer. So I find these particularly useful. I have a friend, Philip, he uses this whenever he needs to take an anemone off of a rock because it's, uh, it's not gonna hurt the anemone and yet it's stiff enough that you can actually get some leverage under an anemone which is slimy and you can get it off. Um, so if you've ever had an anemone stuck on a rock or sand and you're afraid to use a blade or anything sharp because you will hurt the anemone, this is a great tool to try for that one. <coughs> Magic eraser. I'm only talking about the original one. This is a plastic, a uh, very fine particle plastic product. So as you use it, it does disintegrate. So this is not, I would certainly recommend it for scrubbing out like hard to reach, uh, hard to take off coralline algae as an example. But for corners that have a little bit of algae that I can't get to with my razor or with anything else with my uh, magnetic cleaner. I use the magic eraser and salt, definitely use it in my freshwater tanks, but it works great. They have other varieties. They have like super strong kitchen, um, magic eraser kitchen. I do not use any of those. I don't know what's in it, but this is safe. And again, you don't want to use it on something that really requires the scrubbing and disintegration in your water. So a light usage, it really makes your glass crystal clear. Really works very well. We were talking about the good old turkey baster um, and using those command hooks that hold rooms to hold this. So the neck of a turkey baster is significantly wide that those uh, broom holders would work really well. What do people use a turkey baster for? So even if you have a lot of flow, even if you have no sand, you always have detritus and it will go into nooks and crannies in the rocks or under the rocks where you can't get it out no matter how much flow you have. So in lieu of actually taking a pump and blowing it all out from underneath, you take a turkey baster and you pump in jets of air and you will actually see all the detritus come out. If you turn the flow pumps off and just let it come up into the water column, the fish go crazy, you're gonna see your corals go crazy because this is organics that's coming out of your, your rocks and from your tank. And the coral polyps, you'll see they get so happy because there's detritus in the water column. And uh, in, the, in nature, what, the particulate matter in the water column is not as noticeable as the detritus that you're gonna blow into your own, from your tanks. However, reef snow or plankton, all of this is detritus or, or particles that you see in the water column. So you kind of uh, emulating that with your turkey baster when you blast all these particles in the water column. So it's fantastic for doing that. It's great for just, you know, cleaning out areas that you can't get to normally. Polyfill. So we use a lot of polyfilter floss in our tanks for filtration and you can put it in, um, in a sump where your, your drain comes straight into a filter sock or it comes into a filter media holder where you have floss. Um, if you buy a, an aquarium named or aquarium product brand filter floss, you are probably paying about $8 is the lowest I found on Amazon, $8 for a four ounce bag. This is a two pound bag and it was $12 or $14. So you get so much more for the exact same material from a craft store. They use this for quilting, they use this for many, for stuffing pillows or whatever. It's, it's the exact same material for a lot less cost. So don't discount your craft stores. Almost done here, this is pretty quick. Specimen cups, you're see, probably seeing that at a lot of coral vendors outside. So these are originally you know, human urine specimen cups. So when you go to the doctor's office, you pee in a cup, it's generally in one of these. But they're sterilized if you buy them 
off of the internet and they're brand new. So it's a great way to just put in a frag and put in a little bit of water without having to deal with frag bags and not being able to make a knot and it pokes through and it leaks. All of that stuff that maybe professional coral sellers do great, you can't do as a hobbyist. The specimen cup is your answer. So you just open it up, put your frag in there, scoop some water, close it up, you're done. And the added benefit is, I don't like the ones with the paper labels on it, but a lot of them have um, the space to write something just on the plastic itself. So you can use a marker after you're done putting your frag in to name what it is. Just wipe it off so it's not wet and use a marker to name. Yes? And then if you need to relabel it, alcohol gets rid of Sharpies. You can throw some like hand sanitizer on there and wipe it off. That's Super right. awesome. See, there's another repack. Use a... Uh, alcohol to wipe it off if you need to reuse it. Perfect, thank you. Mix and measure. So this is available at the hardware store, right? And so we use it for maybe different containers, maybe even as a coral dip. What's really neat about this is the markings that you see here. When you use certain additives or supplements, you, uh, it generally says mix one part of this to two parts water, one of this to four parts water, so you have some sort of a mixing ratio and you kind of have to calculate based off of your gallon. So I've got, if I've got four gallons, this is how much I use. If I've got 20, I gotta do the math. This makes it really easy. One part to three, one part to one, uh, two, whatever. And there's percentages, there's all kinds of. So if you do four parts to one, this makes all those mixing, um, uh, math really easy so you don't have to spend a lot of time figuring out how to mix what quantity uh, just based off of your gallon size this is available at the hardware store paint section generally colander so not the metal ones but the plastic ones because remember this is salt water i like the ones that have a basket underneath so this is great for coral dipping so you'll fill it up with your dip, you'll put your corals in there, and when you're done with the however long it needs to be in the dip, you just pull the white part out. All the coral dip is, is out already. You can put, you can throw the coral dip, fill it up with fresh tank water to rinse it out if you need to, and then put it into your tank real easily as opposed to picking one in from a bucket, putting it in another place. This makes everything real easy. I've actually seen some people use it to acclimate anemones to clownfish. So whether you get a new anemone or a new clownfish or both together, I've seen them float colanders uh, on the water surface and put a clownfish or two pair with an anemone for a couple of days so they get used to it. And very soon you see the anemone hosting the clownfish. And then if you gently just put it in your tank to where you want the anemone to go, the clownfish just naturally follow it because they've already made it a home. So I've seen people use that for that. I've also seen them to, I've also seen them use it to acclimate fish. <laughs> um, you know, after you've done your uh, acclimation for temperature and acclimation for water chemistry to make sure what's in the bag matches what's in your tank. You can put you can put the fish in here and float um, in your in your tank. So that gives the fish uh, uh, an opportunity to further acclimate to your tank. And it's not particularly see-through, but other inhabitants can see the fish. And so it, having a new inhabitant just go straight into your fit in your fish tank and get attacked try to find a hiding spot, this gives a little bit more time. I find myself personally rushing when I get a fish to do all the acclimation and really quickly put it in the tank because I'm afraid too much time has gone by. So this gives you a little bit extra time, it's already in the tank it's supposed to be, but you're not, you know, maybe the other fish are just gonna attack it. So it gives you a little bit more time. But I found personally the best use for a colander as a coral, dipping um, tool. Plastic bath sponge. What would this be for? Pods. Oh my goodness, yes, pods. So we all want pods in the system. 
Um, fish eat them, they eat detritus, there's a lot going on with the little bitty critters that you can't see in many cases. So you take one of these plastic bath sponges and you put it in a sump or in a quiet area of your tank, even in the return pump section, your, your system is crawling with pods. You may not see them in the display because they may be, um, the fish may be eating them, so they're predators of the pods. Copepods is what we're talking about. So if you throw one of these in your, your refugium or your sump, and give it a few weeks. When you pull it out, it's crawling whether or not you see it. And you'll find if you have a mandarin or a pipefish or any of these specialty food eating fish, um, if you'll put it in a quiet corner where the larger fish can't really get to it or they can't see that it's full of pods, you'll see your mandarin peck on it. You'll see your pipefish peck on it because they are able to see the pods and they go right for it. And if, you do, if you're actually doing a pod culture, this is an excellent way to get the pods out of the culture and into your tank. And if you've got more than one, you just rotate between the, the plastic sponges. So there's, um, there used to be a company, I don't know if they're still around, they used to call it the Pod Hotel. And all it was was a plastic bath sponge um, that they used to transfer pods from a culture into your tank. So I thought that was cute, but it's a bath sponge. There we go, short and sweet and quick. So what I want to know is what do you use that's a reef hack? Something that's a household item? Yes? I don't know if you're going to approve that. Say what? But I use uh, Rain-X on my glass. To clean it. it? No, it, it protects it, it's easier to clean when you spill water on it and it also makes the, uh, the cleaning magnets slide and Oh, slip and slide. Yeah. Is it reef safe though? What if you get a couple drops well, in? You want to spray it on your glass. You want to spray it on like a cloth and then wipe it down. Ah, but it absolutely works for Rain X. That's pretty good. Anybody else with a reef hack? Yes? Hamster, hamster ball that you can get at the pet store to, to acclimate fish. Oh, sort of like your colander yes. idea, except these are like clear plastic balls that snap together. That's pretty awesome too. Never, because then it's sort of in the tank, particularly if you like something that likes to be down near the sand. Because mm -hmm. once the fish is in it, they tend to think that they're You can see them and they can see, yeah. Or even the little, um, little like reptile, I don't know what they're called, they're like um, reptile cages or something. Okay. They, yeah, again, they're cheap, they're small. Oh, I know what you're talking about, the critter keepers. Yes. And they've got a solid top with air. If you put them in upside down, let the air be in the top, mm -hmm. they float along the top of the tank. Oh, yeah. And it's a good way to... Right. Them. I've seen them at the fish store when they have like a, a jumping fish or an octopus. They put them in there so that you can still yeah. see them in the tank, but they're not able to escape. Right. Or a very expensive fish and they don't want to lose it in their large tank, so they put it in a critter keeper. Yeah, that's a good one. Anybody else? Anthony, you know, the, the guy that just introduced me, so he uses PVC pipes to hold his nets. So if you use a large enough pipe where the handle of your net can go through, he uses them to hold his nets. So that's a, you had another one? Well, the colander is the same idea, but I have a colander that's square at home. And I use that to catch fish, it's actually even better. Yeah, it's more gentle. And it has a handle so you can hook it on. Yeah. And the silicone ones are good too because the material is very gentle to fish. Even corals, you know, you don't want um, a hard material to damage SPS. Any other reef hacks? Okay, we'll go get some pantyhose. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you. I have some mascara ones for if anybody wants to clean their tubing.